second time I've stayed there. The last time was nearly exactly a year ago. I'd have to look to see when exactly I came through Cuba. I want to say it was closer to like the 14th or 15th. But yeah, I mean, it was a nice little stay. It's nothing special, nothing complicated. It just covers all the bases. That's the first CDT hiker I've seen, which he's early, <laughs> like it's the seventh. Granted, the snowpack's not very big, so he might actually be fine, but yeah, I mean, he's he's early. A few inches later. Let's get out of Cuba, and I'll turn the cameras back off pretty quick. All right, 120 miles to Grants. There should be a fair amount of sand on this bit, but we'll see. It is what it is, you know? All right, Mount Taylor, 99 miles, Grants, 120. So I'm gonna go quiet on the cameras and I will catch up with you when I dip into dirt. ABS is off. Zoom you in a little bit more. Let's do the thing. Oh, excuse me, bird. <laughs> the good news is the forecast is for 0% precipitation. So, for the next couple of days. Because this is that crap where if it gets wet, it just turns into snot. As long as I don't get rained on over the next couple of days, I will be fine. I'm going right. And the CDT crosses this road at some point. I'm just not sure exactly where because you end up hiking up that. <laughs> and I actually ended up camping fairly close to this road, I believe, because I crossed the road and got, I don't know, maybe another half a mile before it just got to where I couldn't even walk. And I was freezing because it was pouring down rain at that point and I had to take shelter. Did talk to one CDT hiker. He was on day 30, which is about right. So he started in early April, basically. He was saying he knows there's a big old bubble behind him. I let him know that there really wasn't a whole lot of snow up high, so he's probably gonna be just fine. If he was this early last year, he, he'd be waiting in Chama for a week. <laughs> I'm hoping I can see where the trail goes across. It's, I mean, it's going to be in here somewhere. But yeah, let's see. Grants to Cuba was five days, I want to say. Something like that. And I'm going to cover it in one. <laughs> Obviously not exactly the same route, but I'll be crisscrossing it periodically. If I see any other hikers, I'll stop and see how they're doing. And having been on both sides of it, always stop and talk to them. I mean, it's one thing, it's just nice to talk to somebody because generally when you're out on the CDT, you're by yourself for a long period of time. And it's nice to just kind of check in with somebody and see if they're okay, you know? They're probably fine, but I know this section right before I got to the highway, the water sources, there was a water cache that was empty and I was definitely running low on water. So it's always nice to check in and just make sure people are good. You might find somebody that's in legit trouble. It's a lonely hike, but man, it is rewarding. You're out here. When you're, when you're doing this, you are out here. But God, it can be fun. The stuff you see, yeah, you hike right along the edge there. So I'm gonna come up over this hill probably and cross the trail. Um, is that it? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, right there. That was the Continental Divide Trail. Cause yeah, you walk, oh, there's a hiker. 
But yeah, that person should get into Cuba today because they've got maybe seven or eight miles to the north highway. I can't remember the name, which highway it is. And then it's just a question of do they hitch into Cuba or do they walk? If they walk, it's an extra five miles or something, which I would say just hitch. The purists always want to talk about, you know, a continuous footpath or whatever. But you figure out real quick on the CDT that, honestly, if you're on a damn road, hitch. Because it will ruin you, as, as I found out. Because it was that hike up over Cumbers Pass where I spent, you know, 13 miles on the pavement that eventually ended up basically ending my hike. All right, back on private property for a little while, I guess. Oh, I think that was a cow. <laughs> Here's a little bit of sand. It's not bad at all, though. Yeah, I feel bad for those three guys. I mean, granted, they're almost done, so they made it through, obviously, but they were on big, heavy, I mean, heavy bikes. That 1250 had so much fucking luggage on it. Good Lord. They got through it, obviously, but no thank you. This must have just been a nightmare for them. When you're that heavy, I mean, any sand is just a workout. The bike does not track. All you can do is try and go fast and I hope that you can get it to float a little bit. At least that 1250 has a steering damper, so you have that advantage. Yeah, apparently the 1250 guy had a pretty big wreck at one point because he hit some gravel and stuff and it just snatched the handlebars from him. He was pretty sure he broke his foot. See, I mean, there's little bits of sand, but the main advantage is you have a nice wide road and it's relatively straight. So as long as you can get up to speed, just float right over it. It only gets really difficult when you start dealing with sharp curves or narrow trails and sand. <laughs> This was one of the prettiest parts of New Mexico on the Continental Divide Trail. Everything was in bloom because it had been super wet that part of the year. All the cactuses had flowers, cacti, whatever. The rocks were all different colors and everything. It was so beautiful. It was really one of the most enjoyable parts of New Mexico was this stretch between Cuba and Grants. Sage has definitely got my allergies going a little bit. Might have to take a claret when I stop for lunch. On the bike, you can really see all the different layers of dirt as you cross into different stratification levels. You know, you go from red rock, you know, sandstone and all that stuff to black volcanic soil. It's just fascinating to see all the different levels that you hit in fairly short periods of time sometimes, at least on the bike. There is an unfortunate amount of road walking on the CDT, but it's just, I mean, it's the most remote trail of the big three. Like there's no, there's no trails in a lot of places. The only thing you can do is walk on the road. The CDT coalition's working on developing more trail every year, but it's 3,000 miles. Like. There's only so much you can do after a certain point. Oh, this is pretty. Oh, so pretty. All right, I'm not gonna sing for you. You don't wanna hear that anymore and I wanna do it. All right, if I'm recalling this correctly, the CDT is directly off to my left up in these rocks. And it's gonna cross again at a gate down here. Or, yeah, should be. So I'm going right, and so does the trail, because the trail goes off that way. And there's the marker. That's the CDT. I remember this gate. Because <laughs> you go in from there. We'll see how far I get today. I mean, if I get to Grant's and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or something, I'm going to get water and keep going. I know there's a campground... It's technically on the res, but 
there is a designated campground, and so I might go for that. Like, I'm not in a rush, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not trying to go slowly, you know? I'm just trying to ride. So, I, I get there when I get there. I'm guessing any significant sand is gonna be crossing washes, because there was definitely a couple of those. Walking in sand is just exhausting. And at least me personally, I was always worried I was gonna find a damn snake. <laughs> never did other than that first day when we saw that rattlesnake you know I saw a big old gopher snake coming into Grants but otherwise yeah I really didn't see any snakes saw a fair bit of other wildlife but yeah thankfully snakes weren't really the the main thing that I saw I'm not scared of snakes but I'm not a fan of poisonous things that can kill me it all looks pretty different when <laughs> doing it on foot versus doing it on a bike. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure if there was a gate there. It kind of looked like there was for a second. It's still really nice. It's not even 70 yet. It's going to be 80 something today and the next couple of days, but. When I get up by Mount Taylor, it'll be cooler because altitude. There's a little bit of sand. It's still not, there's a hard bottom to it, so it's not bad. I do gotta be cognizant of oncoming traffic because I know of at least a couple other groups of motorcyclists that I should see going the other direction at some point. A school bus? What is that doing out here? I don't even think I could get over to it because it's on the other side of that ravine. How the hell did they even get that over there? So far, none of this is what I would describe as sand. There's sandy sections, but I mean, the longest bit of sand's been shorter than 100 yards and it had a hard bottom. I consider sand where there's just no real path and you're kind of just having to go through it. I expect, the, I mean, there's got to be something for them to have it noted on the map for deep sand in areas. They wouldn't mark it that way if there wasn't something. New Mexico is also one of the first BDRs. I want to say it was second or third when they were making them. And it seems like the newer, they've kind of gone more and more difficult as they've created more and more routes. That, that just seems like what it's kind of done. Northeast is apparently quite difficult in areas. California is obviously very difficult in a few areas. Wyoming is apparently not necessarily super difficult, but it's very remote. Even the sections on here where they say it's quite difficult, I don't know how much that is compared to some of the other areas on the BDRs. And it changes year to year, you know? Tree fall, road washouts, you know, all that's like road construction. I mean, it all changes the, the calculation of the route. So what can be super difficult one year, if they go through and grade the whole thing, can be like this <laughs> the next year. You never know. Difficulty ratings for the BDRs are always really challenging because the other thing is, is what one person finds difficult, another person finds really enjoyable. You know, I don't mind riding in rocks and baby heads and stuff like that, and other people really struggle with that stuff. Sand on one bike is really easy, and on another bike it's damn near impossible. It just depends on the person. Big rock. Ugh. So yeah, you just got you know, they do their ratings, they do their routes, and it's to the best that they can do. There's a good section of sand. That's really what I would consider the first true sand. Yeah, this is all that stuff where if it's wet, you are not riding through it. Like if it started raining on me and I was out here, I would be setting up camp. There, There is no option. There is no power through it or anything like that. Like you're not riding in this stuff if it's wet. 
you will fall, you will probably hurt yourself, and you will not have a good time. It is pretty out here. Wilderness boundary, I guess, something like that. Might get the drone out here for a minute. basically 50 miles from Mount Taylor, so that's 9.30 in the morning. I'm gonna get there at like 11. All right, I should start climbing at any minute here. I believe the Continental Divide Trail is kind of straight ahead of me slash off to my right. So I would imagine I'll cross it again at some point here. Oh, it might be this coming in from my left here. That blue trail. Find out real quick. Oh yeah, because over here was that like cattle tank. You like go down and around and that's where I refilled water. Yeah, here's the trail right here. I can see the marker. Any hikers? I don't see anybody. Yeah, these little posts with the white on the top of them are all the markers for the CDT. So there it is. Again, yeah, you're just walking along the road for a little while. I can't remember where it dips off. There it is. Then you go off that way. So what was funny was when I was planning for this trip, I discovered that there's not really much in terms of update information on the BDR on YouTube. Like there's a few videos out there, but most of them either compress the entire route into one video, they're not doing the whole thing, or they're doing some weird combination of it or whatever. Like there's no recent videos. I think the, I think the closest I found was five years old of people doing the entire thing. Other than that, I mean, you're like the the BDR route overview on YouTube is the is the closest thing to talk about the entire route, and that's from when they created it, you know, seven years ago or whatever it was. And so that's minimally useful because they've redirected it a couple of times since they filmed the initial video. So granted, I'm going north to south, so it's not the the typical route, but you'll at least get a view of the entire thing when these videos go up. But hope yeah, I mean hopefully from a research perspective my videos are useful if you're looking at doing these routes. You know, I try that's why I try and do you know, a video per section roughly just so you can kind of get an idea cuz otherwise it's I mean you see the route but it doesn't necessarily show you what it actually is like to try and ride it. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is other than that f initial little section of pavement just to get out of Cuba, you're on dirt just about the entire way. When I get past Mount Taylor, there is a bit where I'm on the, the road just to come in the Grants. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much this kind of stuff the entire time. What do you expect? This is really fun riding. There's a few sections here and there that are kind of technical. 
and a few sections here and there that are a little sandy. But for the most part, yeah, you, you're just cruising along having fun, you know? Man, it is pretty out here. Definitely having to kind of go the long way around because of the wilderness areas around Mount Taylor. Oh, erosion control, that's smart. They had little bar barrier things there to try and keep the road from washing out. It's actually really smart. Boop. Haven't seen Mount Taylor yet. I've got to start climbing here before too much longer. Because I need to be up there. This is what everybody thinks of when they think of New Mexico. But it's really not. There's a lot of other terrain and beauty in New Mexico. You just gotta get out there and find it. It's a fairly steep oomph. There we go. Oh, that's sandy. Okay. There we go. And over here. Yeah, there's some bits for sure. This is like prime flash flood territory. It rains up in the hills and you know, an hour or two later, you're just gonna have a flood of water. Yeah, I never just hit full send over a cattle guard unless I can see on the other side because you get ones like that where there's a hard turn on the other end of it. Like, it's not what you wanna do. And then going straight. That's really pretty. didn't see the actual gate until the last minute. That would have been a game ender right there. I was just thinking, why is my left foot getting hot? Oh yeah, because it's in the sun and it's just about 80 degrees. That's why my left foot is hot, not my right foot. It is now windy enough that unless I was going the other direction, I would not want to fly the drone. I'm only 15 miles from Mount Taylor based on this. Oh god, yeah, this is gonna be bad. Ten miles of washboard road. I wanna say if those are the antennas right there, that that's the taller one of those two is Mount Taylor. I can't remember if Mount Taylor is the highest mountain in New Mexico. I don't think that it is, but it is the highest point on the CDT in New Mexico, if you do the alternate. And from the parking lot, it's not a long hike, nor is it a difficult one. I mean, I, I walked down that side, obviously, but it's really not difficult. It's not far either. It's maybe one or two miles max. Ooh, it's washed out. I might just get lunch and Grant's and then keep going. It's still, yeah, cooled off nicely, 70 degrees. It'll get hot as I descend back into Grants, but Grants is still at a higher elevation than Cuba, so it may be cooler there than Cuba. Oh, that tree's coming down, and it's coming down soon. No, thank you. Good Lord. Oh, and on to the pavement. All right, 13 miles to Grants. One hour later. And basically the idea is to just camp wherever I decide to. Fence Lake, it's only 84 miles. But there's no services there, so there's no point in trying to like hang out around there. But 84 is no big deal, like I can probably do that. Oh, here's some CET hikers. Good for them. Oh, but yeah, got lunch, got water for camp. I just got two, two one liter bottles basically. Plus what's in my camel back, which is about another three liters. And uh, we'll see how far I go today. I kind of skirt the edge of the El Malpais Conservation Area 
it's not a wilderness area on the edge of it, so you can ride right, right through part of it. And washboard. Not fun. Oh, God. God damn. It's just whipping down this canyon. Up here. There we go. Okay, enough with the washboard. Oh, this is sandy. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. It's just two track. Yeah, I can see the tire marks from the other bikes. Hell yeah, this is awesome. Little flowy two track wonderland. I just don't want to find a cow. Up, up, up. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, everybody went around the other way. Damn it. That just burns so much energy. So yeah, if you're doing this, take that route. It's to your left if you're at the bottom of the hill and it's straight on if you're coming this way. <clears throat> really, if you were coming downhill, you probably wouldn't have much of a problem. Not being in third, I might have actually made that too. Get up here a little ways and probably take a break. God, yeah, this got really washed out. I'm sweating now. Alright, I meet up with another trail somewhere along here. Pretty close, based on the map. Yep, here it is. But yeah, if anything that hill climb shows you, sometimes you don't want to just follow the route. The conditions of the route change, and sometimes the workarounds are better. You do want to try and stay on the trails, but something like that, the trail basically has ceased to exist, and so you just gotta do what you can. Well, this wouldn't have been fun to come up at all. is doable but yeah big bikes would have had fun god it is pretty back here it's on the technical side for what I've seen in New Mexico so far but it is fun yeah I really can't pick that bike up more than about five times before it's just too much um, I mean obviously I'm not in great shape right now but it's just exhausting. Well, I'm gonna have to do it. Oh, didn't want to dive down in here, but not much of a choice when it's that or hit a tree. <laughs> All right, sorry tree. Yeah, here you're starting to see the volcanic stuff. Third it is. Oh, some flowers. Yeah, this thing's handling sand way better than with what I had on it for the California BDR. I think adjusting the suspension also made a big difference. The front end is definitely not plowing as badly as it was. It will here and there, but it's very predictable. And as soon as you give it a little bit of 
gas. It just floats on through. Predictability is key. Like, you know, it can be difficult terrain or something, and it can dance around on you or whatever, but as long as it is predictable, you're fine. It's when you don't know what it's gonna do in a given circumstance that it totally f you. And generally speaking, this bike is very predictable. I mean, going up that hill climb, I got sideways as hell. The bike behaved in a way where it did what I kind of expected it to, and so I was able to stay with it until it died, and then there's not that much you can do, you know? And I'm going left. And I'm back on a big road. Yeah, there were a couple of bits in there that were a workout. Oh, God. And we're stopping because there's a car there. And we're going because they're turning. And I wasn't actually expecting to go back on the dirt before uh, Little Pine Gas Station or whatever this is. But I did, so we're gonna do this. And I got 17 miles to Little Pine. Whatever that is. Private land, look for cows. Yes, that is always a good idea. Haven't hit a cow yet, don't plan on it. It's gonna be really cool to get down near the Gila River wilderness area and see all that again. Obviously, I kind of skirt the edge of it, but it'll still be cool. Oh, that's a lot of gravel. That's a lot of damage. It is so pretty out here. I wish the wind wasn't just howling, but not much I can do about that. This isn't gonna be a very interesting video for which I apologize. But it's still pretty. My horses. You're on my side of the fence too. Thank you. Oh, you look skinny. Oh, you're wild horses. You are wild. Okay. Okay, I'm two miles from this one place, whatever the hell it's called. A few moments later. 27 miles to Fence Lake, which means I should be there in less than an hour. It should be basically 4 or 4.15. I wasn't really expecting to do 200 miles today, but it's going to be pretty close to that. It's just, you know, I wasn't sure how long it was going to take me to get to Grants. I'd heard all the horror stories about deep sand and stuff along that route. Did it, and I'm in Grants at noon. Oh, but yeah, I'm just gonna camp somewhere up here. I aren't sure how far I'll get. Basically, just making sure that I'm on public land or at least something that's not fenced off. <clears throat> bonk, bonk, bonk. It's right there. This looks interesting. Let's find out. Oh yeah, definitely. Oops, lots of rocks. Let's go see what we got. Oh yeah, oh, definitely. Got a fire ring and everything. Ta-da! All right. Uh, 208 miles today. Yeah. 6.15. Camp set up. It's very windy, but honestly it was going to be windy no matter what. Because if I followed the road down, I would be down on the floor of the valley. And it would still be windy. So, and uh, I do have my bike acting as a windbreak for my tent. But, the views make everything worth it. Yeah, just been hanging out. I actually do have cell phone reception, so I've been posting some stuff. Been drinking water, eating some food. I'll work on downloading footage here in a minute. Today was fun. 
There were some difficult areas, but for the most part, it was pretty much just kind of flowy, fast roads. Just hanging out. I'll eat some more before I go to sleep.